welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christine and I'm excited for today's project because I have this vintage table scarf that has been, oops, that's the wrong side. It's been beautifully cross-stitched by someone in the past um, with these beautiful roses and little little yellow and blue accents. And I just love the greens, these little flower moments, little buds, and the little posy on the corner does have a couple little stains. So I'm gonna be working around the stains, but what I'm going to be making is a bathrobe using my Carnegie robe pattern. So I have done one already out of also a, uh, a white cutout dresser scarf and I just love it. And so I thought I would make another one in color using this one. And while I do, I thought I would show you the technique that I've perfected for getting a French seam, a really smooth French seam along a 90 degree angle because the robe actually, um, it's a perfect 90 degree angle where we attach the sleeve to the, the body of the garment. So there's just a little trick that I've been playing with and really loving the result. And so I thought I'd share. I also have gotten a few requests for um, a sew along of the Carnegie robe. So I figured I would not only show the French seam technique on the side, but I'll also show you how I attach this neck band and how we finish the very bottom, uh, the hem. So this is the hem and then um, this area in the bottom of the neck band with the hem, how we get this really beautiful professional finish. So I'll walk you through that. I will definitely add timestamps below. So if you're just interested in the French seam, you can pop over there. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna be using this dresser scarf for the sleeves and instead of doing a side seam pocket, I'm actually going to be doing a patch pocket because I wanna use these beautiful posies on the corners for my little patch pocket. So I have the dresser scarf I'm gonna be using. I'm also gonna be using just this tablecloth that I found that is a similar color to my dresser scarf. They're both kind of this antique white, I would say. Um, and this is just super, super soft. It's either a sheet or a tablecloth, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be using this for the body and then the dresser scarf for the sleeves. So the pieces we're gonna be working with are the back of the robe, which is cut on the fold, um, the front, which we're gonna cut two of, and then the sleeve, which I am actually going to be shortening the sleeve just a bit. Um, just because I have this dresser scarf, so I'm kind of working with the embroidery design. We're going to need to cut two of our neck band as well as two of the belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my pieces cut out and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. To get started sewing, I'm gonna sew a French seam on the shoulders so I've lined up my back to my two fronts, wrong sides together. And then I'm gonna sew that first seam using a half of an inch seam allowance. Then I'll take it to the iron and I'm gonna press my seams open. And then I'm going to trim that seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch. Then I'll fold my garment right sides together and sew the final seam in a quarter inch, encasing all the raw edges inside. Then I'll give it a really good final press, pressing the seam towards the back. Next, I'll do the same thing to both of my sleeves, being extra careful to start with wrong sides together. Okay, so I've got my sleeves connected to my garment using the French seam. I've gone ahead and pressed the seam towards the sleeve. So we've got a nice neat shoulder seams and the, the sleeve seam. So now we're going to trim away this excess seam allowance that we have. It's a quarter inch. So I've placed my sleeve right sides together. So the seam is just laying flat. 
And now I can see I have this bit of overhang. So I'm going to trim away this extra quarter of an inch so that the rest of my side seam here is even with the edge of my French seam. So I'm actually just going to, because this robe is so long, I'm just gonna kind of fold up the bottom. And so I'll trim two layers at once. And I'm just going to trim a quarter inch away from my seam allowance. And what this does is move this seam just off of the um, off of the corner just a bit by about a quarter inch so that it will remove some of the bulk. So see how nice and smooth that is? Now I'm gonna do that on the other side of my sleeve or side seam as well. Now I'm gonna fold my garment uh, wrong sides together. So we're gonna sew the first seam of our French seam, obviously, wrong sides together. So I'm just matching up my sleeve um, and my side seam, the raw edges, and I'll get those pinned in place. Now comes the trick. So because we've trimmed away a bit of our seam allowance on our side seam, I'm going to now sew this entire seam with a half of an inch seam allowance. So my first stitch will be a quarter inch, and then my second row of stitching will be a quarter inch. So knowing that, I am going to make two markings right here on the corner of my garment. The first one is going to be a quarter inch from this, from the point, from this corner where um, the 90 degree angle. So from the very corner there, I'm going to mark in a quarter inch and just make a mark there. This is a water soluble pen, um, even though it looks like a normal pen. And then I'm going to make one mark um, at the half inch. So I'm making this at a diagonal from the very corner of my 90 degree angle, just making it in um, at a 45 degree angle from my 90 degree angle. So one marking at a quarter inch and another at a half inch. And now what we're going to do, when we go to sew this, I'm going to come up the side seam and I'm going to put my needle down just before I reach the quarter inch dot. And I'm going to pivot and I'm going to sew until I reach my second dot. Stop with the needle down, pivot, and then sew down just to the other side of that first marking and then pivot and sew down my sleeve. So that way, this is going to give us just a little um, indent, and then we're gonna slice this all the way to our second dot. So let's go do this. I'm gonna actually place one more pin. Now that I have this marked, I'm just gonna um, just place a pin here so it all stays together. Okay, so here I am sewing up my side seam here at a quarter of an inch and I have my machine set to stop with the needle down. And as I approach my corner, I'm just going to be mindful to stop right before, right to the left of my red, first red dot. So, so, so. And we'll just stop about there. Okay, and then I stop and I pivot and I'm going to pivot in the direction of that second red dot. So I'm just kind of angling my machine there and I'll sew two to three stitches until I reach that, uh, that dot. Three, okay, three did it. And I'll stop with my needle down again and I'm going to pivot this all the way like this. Um, so I'm pointing myself again towards the first red dot, but I'm going to be sewing towards now, towards the left-hand side of it, um, to just make our little area. There we go. So I've stopped just to the left of the dot, needle down, uh, press her foot up again, and now I'm just going to continue sewing down my sleeve at a quarter of an inch. So now we have this really interesting V shape in the corner of an inner armhole, essentially. And so what we're going to do is, I think it will focus. So now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim 
right in between my stitching. So we've created a little channel between the two dots that's like a V and it gives us just enough space to trim right up almost to that second dot. So I'm going to take my sharp scissors and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it's a little, it's just a little tricky because um, there is some bulk here. Maybe scissors, yeah. I'm just going to very carefully kind of show you if I can, show you what I'm doing here. Um, so very, very, very carefully. Just trimming. Being careful not to trim any of my stitches, but I'm getting very, very, very close. It's, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, <laughs> let's say that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is now um, press the seam open and then I'll trim my seam allowance to just a scant eighth of an inch. Now I'm just going to turn everything right sides together and just do a little bit of pressing before I sew my second seam. Um, and at this point, this corner should be looking, should be laying pretty flat. I'll show you how mine is looking at the moment. So I haven't pressed it yet, but it is actually laying pretty flat. I'm sewing my second line of stitching at a quarter of an inch. So this is a close-up of what the stitching actually looks like. I hope you can see it. So see how when we've sewn that divot, it actually creates a little divot in our armhole um, or in our armpit there. And so that's what removes the bulk from that area. So it's kind of hard to see my actual stitching, but when you, you pivot just about here and then you um, see how at this point it's less than a quarter of an inch and then as I sew, the, the seam returns to its full quarter inch but there, there is just an indent right here. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to show, um, to show because it's so minute, but I hope that you try this technique and it helps you to get a really smooth French seam in a 90 degree angle. So our robe is definitely coming along. I am excited. Let's try it on. Um, kind of starting, oh, that's so pretty. It's going to be really, really, really pretty. So now I'm going to work on finishing the hem and sewing the neckband so we get that really nice finish at the bottom. So the first thing we're going to do may sound kind of counterintuitive, but we're going to hem our robe first. And so you can definitely try it on, mark your hem where you want it. I'm actually going to just do a fold under about a half of an inch and then fold up about an inch and a half. And for me, that's the way I'm gonna hem this based on this fabric. So I'm gonna have a hem like that. So I'm going to press this in and then I'll just top stitch right along the fold. And now that I have my hem sewn in, I'm going to take my neckband pieces and sew them right sides together along one of the short edges. I've sewn my seam. I've just gone ahead and pressed the seam open. We don't have to worry about doing a French seam or any finishing on this particular seam because it's all going to be enclosed in our neckband, right at center back. But I am just going to trim this seam down to about a quarter inch or so just to get rid of the bulk. And so we'll just wanna press that seam open, so nice and flat. And then the next thing that we're gonna do with the neckband is press it in half lengthwise. So I'm um, wrong sides together. So just making sure that my wrong sides are facing up and I'm just going to fold my neckband all the way uh, in half lengthwise, just matching those, um, the cut edges and just give this a good press 
all the way down the neck band. I have my neck band pressed in half lengthwise. I'm going to open it out and on one of the long edges, I'm going to fold under a half of an inch and press that in. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it at a half of an inch, but um, you can definitely measure, measure this in. So just folding up a half of an inch along the entire edge. Now that I have my neck band pressed in half and then about a half of an inch pressed under on one long edge, I'm going to be working with our unpressed edge and I'm going to match my neck band right sides together onto my garment. So I've gone ahead also and I've done just a bit of stay stitching around the neck of my garment. So I've stay stitched just at about five eighths of an inch around this area because we're going to be clipping. So then I take my neck band and I also just mark a center back marking with a pin just by folding this together, matching the seams, and then coming up with the exact center back. So I'm going to match my center back, uh, my pin there, to the right side of my neck band just at that center back seam. So that's going to be the first place that I put a pin in, just like that. So now I'm just going to start working my way around the neck band. First, just making a couple little notches around the curve of the back and just one here on the front so that my neck, my garment is going to lay flat so that I can uh, match it up with my neck band. So I'll just do it on the other side. I'm just going to make one, two, three, or about maybe six notches into my garment. And then I will just start work, working my way around, pinning my neckband to my garment, just making, the, making it flat there. So because of my clips, now this lays nice and flat there. And I'll just continue pinning all the way to the bottom. Now at the edge of at the bottom edge of our robe, we're going to have some extra neck band hanging. I'm that's totally fine. I'm just going to put a pin here at the bottom. So when we sew this, we're going to just sew all the way down and we're going to backstitch right here. We can actually sew off the hem of our garment. Okay, so now I'm going to attach my neck band um, to my garment where I pinned it. I actually like sewing with my neck band on the bottom layer and my garment on top. This makes it just a little bit easier to navigate once we get to the neck area. So I'm just going to start right at the um, right at the bottom edge there of my neck band, make a back stitch, and just sew all the way around the neck band. As I get to the neckline area where we've done the notches, I'm just taking care to sew, um, make sure there's no puckers, and I'm keeping very close to my stay stitching, and that gives me a nice clean edge there. And just making sure that the raw edges stay aligned, and just keeping everything nice and straight as I sew. No puckers. Okay, and now we're going to grade the seam allowance. So I'm taking my, uh, my duck bill scissors here and using them to trim the neck band side of my seam allowance to just about an eighth of an inch like that. And then I'll cut the garment side of my seam allowance to just about a quarter of an inch or so. So we're just trimming some of that bulk out of this seam. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is um, all going to be enclosed into the inside of our neck band. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now 
Now that we've got our seam allowance graded, I'm going to press the seam allowance that we have left towards the neckband. And I like to do this from the right side of my garment. So I'm just, um, this fabric is pretty sheer, so I can kind of feel and see a little bit of the seam allowance. So I'm just kind of running my hand below and just pressing the seam really nicely towards the neckband. Now that I have my seam allowance pressed towards my neckband, this is the wrong side of my garment. Um, so we have our the, the basically the center of our neckband ironed in that we did in the first step. So what I'm going to do is actually press, kind of finger press that backwards along that seam or along that fold. So it's we're going against the the press that we already did, and just folding the neckband. I'm going to fold under the half inch that we folded under and just pin this right here. And now we are going to sew right along the hem. So this is the hem of our garment, and I'm just going to sew right along the neckband, right sides together, this is, and just sew right along where my pin is. And then we'll trim the excess away, turn this right side out, and then it's going to give us a really nice finish along the lower hem and then we can just our neckband will fall right into place because of the press that we've already done and then we'll just top stitch it so let's do first step first I'm going to uh, just sew right along the bottom hem of my neckband so I have my bottom seam sewn and now I'm just going to trim this excess off leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance there, but I am in the corner. I am just going to clip kind of diagonally to the corners to reduce some of that bulk. And now we're just going to flip this inside out or right side out. And the, the neckband naturally folds along that fold line that we've pressed in previously. And then we have a nice neat finish so once I go and I'm just going to, you know, press this area, it will lie really, really nice and flat. And we have the neckband folds over just about an eighth of an inch um, to cover all of our raw edges on the inside. And so then that gives us a really, really nice finish to our robe, to our neckband. I've gone ahead and actually pressed the other side um, and, uh, and actually started pinning the neckband in place. The final step to finishing our neckband is to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. I usually do this from the top side and because we folded under the half of an inch on our neckband, we have just this really nice eighth of an inch that on the wrong side so we're always making sure to catch our neckband nicely on the wrong side while top stitching it really nice and neatly an eighth of an inch away from the seam.